Today I'm going to talk through the basics of how to make a furled leader. You can make furled leaders in tapered or flat. I use the flat ones for my Tenkara rod. I also use them for the back end of my nymph lines. A few weeks ago after following the plans that are posted on the internet for a furled leader jig, I built a basic jig for making a seven and a half foot which results in a nine foot tapered leader. It's really just a, a, a long board with a series of wooden pegs inserted into it. One of the things about furled leaders is all the colors that you can use. Today I'm going to use six saw uni thread. I use a number of different tools for making furled leaders. They're basic fly tying tools. I also have a few custom that are just really bent over straight pins. The first step is to load your fly tying thread. Today I'm using 6 aught uni thread onto a bobbin and just make a simple overhand loop. This is how you're going to start and finish your furled leader. You're looking for this loop to be about three inches long. Then you're going to take that loop and you're going to hook it over one of your hooks or just a fixed object. Today I'm using a jig, but really all you need to do is wrap this around um, two fixed objects to do a level leader. The leader that I'm going to make today is significantly shorter than you would, you would normally make, just for illustration purposes. The next step is to start wrapping your thread around your fixed objects. For illustration purposes, again, I'm making a very short leader, um, but for a standard 10-foot Tenkara level leader, I would make it about 22 feet long, so I would be walking back and forth across the house. Um, today I'm going to make three loops, which is about 6 pounds, and when I double it, it will be about 12 pounds, and that's a typical back section for me. Is the 6 out uni thread is, is really close to about 2 pounds. Once your wraps are complete, you should have 3 to 4 wraps around your post for the back section, and then the same around the hooks with the completed knots. The next step is I'm going to load a lawn stake or just a bent paper clip or something with some strength to it into my drill and set my drill to clockwise. I'm going to slowly lift off all of those one side of those strands and pull it tight. Once I get it straightened out, I'm going to begin spinning my drill clockwise and just keeping a little bit of tension on that and making sure I'm, the reason I push my hand on it is to make sure it doesn't get too tight and I'm just going to keep spinning it for 30 seconds to a minute, depends on how long your leader is. To check and see when the leader's done, I look for it to curl up or furl. This one's gone a little bit too far so I'll back the drill up and go the other direction until it just begins to furl. The next step is probably the trickiest step in the whole process and that's where we're going to fold the leader in half and back up on itself. I'm going to use uh, a paper clip and a bobbin to help me do this but usually having a helper makes this the easiest. Once you're finished, you'll have both ends hooked over the end of your cup hook. And I use these tools to help me facilitate the transferring of these loops from one thing to another. The next step is we're going to reverse the direction of our drill and we're going to loop it onto the folded over section where our paper clip is right now.
as you can see, the transfer of these loop is really the most complicated part of this process as well as keeping the whole thing tight. Now we're simply going to spin the drill counterclockwise until we begin to see it furl again. The reason we make our original leg 10 to 20 percent longer is because in this step the leader is actually going to shorten. And now by testing the leader you see it just begins to furl. This means we're just about perfect and I'm going to stop. Next we're going to transfer each loop on the end onto a paper clip so we don't lose the furl. And on the other end I'm going to remove the metal from the drill and begin the unfurling process where we just slowly let the spin out of the leader until the point that it's low enough we're going to lift the other end out and unfurl the other side. This is typically a much longer leader so you have to find a pretty tall place to do this, someplace usually 10 feet tall. And there's your completed leader. Just as you would with a mono leader you can tie a perfection loop in each end and thread on your normal tippet material. I like to coat the ends with a little bit of loon water-based head cement to make them a little bit more durable. Today we made a really short and simple level leader, but the techniques that we used are applicable to any length leader that you might want to use in your fishing. These leaders are totally worth it and I hope this helps.